and welcome to Dawn News English. I'm Nadia Naki with you with 20 minutes and we have with us Advocate Supreme Court. You all know him, Mohammed Ahmed Ben Sota. And we shall be discussing about uh, Arshad Sharif's brutal murder uh, for which the Supreme Court took suo motto and has also ordered today to uh, form a GIT which is inclusive of the intelligence officials. Thank you so much for joining us. Ben Sota, first of all, there's a lot of debate going around regarding Supreme Court's uh, Suomoto decision on this case and that too, 43 days after this murder. Today, uh, you know, during the hearing, they had said that they had taken this Suomoto notice on uh, the letters that had been written by Ashad Shari's family, primarily his mother and daughter. However, they were going through this thoroughly before taking the notice. Uh, have you ever seen such a late Suo Motors uh, notice in the history that you've been practicing? Uh, well, thank you very much to uh, allow me to make a comment on this. You see, first of all, we need to understand that the confines of uh, a Suo Moto action have been defined under Article 1843 of the Constitution. And there are just two grounds. Mainly, it's a violation of a fundamental right and matter of public importance. Now, there is no timeline given as such, so it all depends on when and uh, at what particular time does the Chief Justice feel that a Suomoto action needs to be taken. You see, in this particular context, I think it's slightly belated, and once the pressure was exerted by different quarters, which includes the journalists as well, it was only then when it was taken. There are instances where uh, the court allows the government functionaries to perform its job and if in doing so court reaches this conclusion that the job has not been done properly or in accordance with law then they go on to take suomoto action of that but generally speaking i have never seen such a late suomoto especially when it starts from the scratch absolutely because that's what you know since the time i've stepped into journalism i've never seen such a belated suomoto having said that um, you know, uh, there's another thing that goes around this Suomoto, uh, you know, the Supreme Court taking Suomoto. You uh, do remember Prime Minister Sharif actually doing a press conference on this and said that, you know, he has written a letter to the Chief Justice of Pakistan to form a high power judicial commission on this. And, you know, the question arises that a chief executive of a country writing a letter to the Chief Justice of Pakistan to take this matter very seriously. Uh, and, you know, nothing was done on that. Uh, instead, a 43-day late Suomoto is being taken. What uh, what would you say on this? You see, first of all, the Prime Minister of the country writing a letter to the Honourable Chief Justice and uh, requesting him to take Suomoto action of a particular incident for which primarily Ministry of Interior should be enough, I think is a proof enough of the incompetence of that Prime Minister of the Federal Government. It is primarily the job of the executive to register a case and then proceed uh, in accordance with law. Now, when you are involving the Supreme Court of Pakistan, what essentially you are doing is that you are trying to either fast track the procedure or okay. you're trying to sidetrack the procedure. Here, what the Prime Minister has done is that very conveniently he said that we want you to take a Suomoto action. However, we want the entire Supreme Court to sit and decide this particular issue. Now, one part of it could have been possible that uh, he could have requested the Honorable Chief Justice. However, the latter part where he tells him to form a particular bench is something unheard of. It's, it's a prerogative that lies solely with the Chief Justice of Pakistan under Supreme Court rules and orders. He can form a bench that he deems appropriate and he even if he feels that there is a necess necessity to take a sumoto action he can do so primarily as a lawyer and as a, as a student of law i am against the very concept of suomoto action why okay. because when you take a suomoto or when you take up something in suomoto proceedings you are in fact violating i would say four or five rights of appeals of a particular person but then there are instances such as arshad sharif's case or i would say uh, one or two other instances where there is a blatant violation of a fundamental right which courts have, are duty bound to guard in that case you must take it and take it at the earliest so that there is no delay and you see in, even in this case uh, delay in taking up it in suho motor proceedings has resulted in miscarriage of justice i would say because the fir has now been registered by the police which is also unheard of i mean it is possible it has been done in the past but you see that happening in cases where you see you know there is a dead body lying on the road and you don't know who uh, uh, the complainant is or who is going to claim this dead body but not in cases such as arshad sharif or wazirabad incident or any other incident for that matter okay so pensota there's another thing you know ar ar around this fir uh, i heard some of the legal experts of the opinion that the fir should have been registered um 
by the police by going up to his family once they had received the body and they should have not waited for this FIR and today I, I do understand that during the hearing one of the judges uh, the honorable judges had also said that you know in this country the FIR are always registered pretty late okay now there are two or three aspects to this particular question so first of all you, uh, you know for our audience I need to clarify that the section that deals with registration of FIR is section 154 CRPC and it's very simple it says whosoever lays an information before the officer in charge of commission of a cognizable offense he is bound to reduce that into writing in form of first information report now the purpose of first information report is to set the ball rolling and the investigation can begin and then if police feels the person concerned can be arrested now what has happened here is that in Pakistan over the last few years or maybe I would say decades FIR once registered police considers it imperative to arrest the accused person whosoever he is regardless of the nature of the offense that has been leveled against him or her. So this is exactly what happened here. Now here there were chances that some high profile people could have been nominated which of course transpired today that in her application she obviously leveled allegations against some very senior personnel which of course is another aspect that we'll discuss later. So just to control that, it seems just to control that, police registered a case under their own, I would say, you know, while being the complainant. Now, this particular aspect or this particular kind of action is only taken in cases where there is nobody who claims to be the complainant. Also, if you consider police to be the complainant here, then you're also giving way to that particular police officer to strike a settlement with whosoever the concerned person is because uh, under the Diet laws and the section level is three or two, then what we are expecting is that that police officer will tomorrow deal with the uh, with the Leviathan of uh, you will see Arshad Chiri. So you see, it's 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 completely I would say it's completely a farce that has happened in front of uh, us, and this is the second time it has happened. And very yeah. interestingly, both these times, Supreme Court had passed an order to register the case, and both the times, police officer went on to register the case, and the next day it was presented in court. And Supreme Court, of course, didn't object. So, of course, the matter is subjudice. I'll have to exercise caution here as well. Maybe Supreme yes. Court will be a different conclusion. But yes, my knowledge of uh, criminal law teaches me or tells me or compels me to make this statement that primarily it is the complainant or it is the concerned person, the aggrieved person or the person who has actually gone through uh, loss and damage, whatever the kind of... Yes. Yeah, you know, and the ordeal, of course, and there's so much attached to this case. Now, there's another thing that, you know, some people are of the opinion, why would FIR registration in this country help, um, you know, to, to reach to a logical end or probably punish those who were uh, involved in this brutal murder of Arshad Sharif? Because there are like two other countries involved. One is the UAE and then there are there is Kenya. The, the murder actually, you know, the crime really happened in Kenya. However, you know, You're the fact finding right. report says that there are characters here in Pakistan and there are characters here in the UAE and then the, there are characters um, in, you know, Kenya, probably those are the executors. Well, you are 100% right in, you know, making that uh, statement, especially to the extent of the murder taking place in Kenya. However, the reason why FIR is being registered here is because Prime of Ishai, Prime of Ishai, this is the perception that is being taken and now there is a formal application on record by Arshad Sharif, the late Arshad Sharif's mother, that the planning was done in Pakistan. So therefore, the section that they could have, you know, leveled here is section 109, then 302 is of course murder, but murder, if done in connivance with somebody from Pakistan, well in that event Pakistani courts of course can take jurisdiction, but the action itself has taken place beyond the territory and this is a question which was raised by the bench today, that the most important important part of this investigation uh, is to be performed not in Pakistan but in Kenya and that is what the most important aspect of this case should be. We are bogged down in other affairs whether the FIR was registered on time or not, who the FIR should be registered against, these are, these are equally important issues but at the same time the, the crime scene or the place of occurrence is also very important. So Supreme exactly. Court has directed the authorities to first of all uh, take the statement of Ashish Sharif's mother and then act on that statement. Now, you see, as the law stands uh, today, there is a judgment by the Honorable Supreme Court called the Subra BB case, the famous case, which says mm -hmm. that a second FIR cannot be registered. And this is precisely why police jumps onto important cases and gets the first case registered so that they can control the case. So here, exactly the same thing has happened, that now that there is an FIR, 
the paragraph 27 i would say i think uh, sub clause 4 of that judgment says that if there is any subsequent version of the same uh, event or the crime then that can only be made part of the fir through a formal statement under section 161 crpc you cannot register a subsequent case however my take on it is slightly different because paragraph 27 2 of the same judgment is also very interesting it says if uh, the scene of crime how it happened what were the circumstances leading to it if they are all included then that's the conclusive version of in the fir However, uh -oh. I believe that the FIR which has been registered does not contain all three ingredients. Therefore, there is a slight room for another FIR, which maybe, maybe court allows, but from today's, uh, I would say, demeanor of court, I don't see that happening. So I think Arshad Sharif's mother will have to become part of the investigation in the already registered FIR and uh, submit her uh, or make her submissions or whatever she wants to say. And police will obviously act in accordance with law against whosoever that statement is being made. Okay, another surprising element at least for me was that you do recall that you know there were a lot of programs that were being conducted after Arshad Shari's brutal murder that he had been writing to the Supreme Court, uh, to the Honorable Chief Justice of Pakistan against all the cases that were registered uh, against him in this country which compelled him to actually leave the country and that's what his mother has been saying and his family has been saying. So did, uh, you know, who can ask the honorable quote on this that you know why did you not take notice of of the letter that was already given to you because today at some point they did say that you know everyone acts after the crime has been performed well i think it's a very very pertinent question that every pakistani is asking to the honorable chief justice of pakistan with utmost reverence i will also pose the same question to the honorable chief justice and my question is that had there been uh, uh, you know some sort of assumption of jurisdiction before uh, the fir things would have been different because there is a very important statement that the honorable chief justice made today and he said that now that the fir is registered and the matter relates to a criminal offense therefore right. forming the commission is not a very viable solution here had he taken this in Suomoto jurisdiction, let's say 40 days ago or maybe 43 days ago, then maybe he would have ordered or maybe he could have ordered uh, the commission to be formed or made. So I think uh, there is, uh, I, I certainly can smell a rat, not at the Supreme Court level, but at the government level. And Supreme Court should not have delayed it. But now that it is delayed, it can cover up, make up of all those delays by making sure, just like Panama case, if you can supervise investigations in a corruption case and there can be a monitoring judge who can be appointed, I think this case merits appointment of a judge of the Supreme Court of Pakistan to ensure that justice is done. Not to ensure that uh, political victimization or witch hunting can be done. I have utmost respect for Arshad Sharif's mother and I equally respect the people that she has nominated in the application because they're all senior people uh, from Pakistan's uh, you know, institution. So I will give all of them the benefit of the doubt. However, law requires, justice requires that it should be done in a manner that it is seen to be done. It should not be done in a manner that, you know, we are still after 43 days, Nadia and Ahmed are talking again that what has happened and there's nothing has happened. Absolutely. Okay, so now, you know, let, let's come to the fact finding uh, report. Okay, there are about 595 pages, one really has to go through it. But however, you know, the important points that one can actually uh, discuss upon is that A, he was compelled to leave the UAE. Now, who compelled him to leave UAE is so, so important because he had been running for his life, not only from Pakistan, then the UAE. And you know, while he's in Kenya, he applies um, for the visa and twice it is rejected. So, you know, you can smell something really fishy going around. Um, and okay, this is I something, and then of course, you know, you know, the statements made by Vakar and Khurram, those two people, and they are contradictory statements, then the CCTV uh, footage was not handed over, then, you know, the possession, uh, the valuables of Arshad Sharif, be it the USB, his wallet, his diaries, everything all are there they are not handed over to pakistan why uh, well i think once again uh, very pertinent questions and the report that you've just uh, referred to i believe it's an absurd report and the way that report has been compiled if you start reading it it it, it reeks of i would say bias because it uh, sort of refers to people refers yeah. to their statements and then you can very easily tell i mean like last night i was watching mr kashif abbasi's show and he made something very interesting he said my statement 
has been reduced into writing in 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 a language that I that sort of shows that I never went to school. He said I never made these statements, and similarly, many other people have said that. So why was the report uh, sort of compiled before the registration of case? Why was this report kept secret? Even the Supreme Court of Pakistan was not handed over this report yesterday. It was said the Prime Minister has to go through it first. Why was the Prime Minister so keen? Why was the Ministry of Interior so you know in a hurry or so hurriedly prepared this report? And then the contents of the report itself. I mean, it, yeah. it is so self-destructing. At one point in time, it is mentioning something else, and the very next paragraph is completely something else. I mean, you could you you can very easily smell that it has been drafted in portions at different places and then compiled in form of a report. So the only part that uh, sort of allows me to call it a report is that yes, it has been compiled. So apart from that, it is not a report. Uh, and and you know those were Kenyan police officials. I mean, their statements are not even included. If exactly. if the fact finding commission, the members of the commission did, you know, meet them and which which was discussed today, why is it not mentioned? And then they say the fourth one was injured, so we never got to see him. Well, th th these are the questions which I believe either a judicial commission can answer or some high powered commission can answer. And once again, another very important statement, the Honorable Chief Justice said that make sure you include officers who are not subordinate to yeah. the people who have been named in the FIR or proposed FIR. So my question is, is there anybody in this country who is not subordinate to them? <laughs> Even if you nominate, uh, I don't want to say anything, but you see, so you, you have to exercise uh, extreme caution when you're investigating this. So yeah. once again, it will be a nightmare for anybody to even sort of have slightest of connection with this uh, offense uh, when it comes to those people who have been nominated because it's, it's going to be a nightmare for any Pakistani. So I yeah. hope and I pray that nothing of that sort happens. However, we reach the real culprits. That is also equally important because freedom of expression, freedom of press, it all is at stake at the moment because all of us, including you, everybody will stop making, will stop discussing these things then eventually when we don't have protection from the state, the constitution, the courts, then of course, why are we even discussing such important issues? Absolutely. So I, believe, Absolutely. I believe the Honorable Chief Justice must take it very seriously and form some sort of independent commission. Maybe United Nations could be requested to, that's one example, that's one option. In Benazir Bhutto's case, uh, United Nations uh, conducted a thorough probe or maybe some international organization which we all subscribe to or which we all you know hold credible they can yes. be a point but i okay. don't think so anybody in pakistan has the cheek to investigate this offense because because it, it it is getting very very dirty now and i hope i hope it gets sorted out soon because it's a serious cause for concern okay so last two minutes that we have and my last question to you would be understanding the legal justice system in this country and also in this particular crime that we see uh, there is you know the crime happened in another country and then of course the extradition treaties that we have with different countries do you really see this going to a logical end or is it just going to stay um in the form of a trial well well to be honest uh, in pakistan if you if you if you uh, sort of take up the history or go through the history, you've seen the worst of decisions. You've, you've seen Zulfikar Ali Bhutto Saab being uh, sentenced in an yeah. extreme frivolous case. And then you've got cases such as Model Town Incident, which have never been investigated. I, as a student of law, as a lawyer of this country, I await the decision of that uh, important trial. But it is still pending and they are still deciding. The judiciary in Punjab is still deciding whether the JIT could have been formed or whether the JIT could not have been formed. This reminds me of a very important incident from the history when Constantinople was being taken over by Muslims. Christians, while sitting within the fort, were discussing whether the urine of uh, Jesus is uh, either acceptable or not. And outside the forces of Muslim, Muslim forces were taking it over. So at the moment, we are exactly bogged down in similar discussions and we're not even bothered about the substantive justice. I don't care whether JIT can be formed or not, whether the investigation report is properly prepared or not. I want justice. I want to see people behind bars who have shot blindfolded, who shot from, you know, point blank distance at females, children and other people. And similarly, no important case in Pakistan, apart, even apart from Panama case, I would say that too, you know how it was done. I just mentioned that you needed a JIT, you needed a Supreme Court judge to make sure that it is concluded. So yes, the, I would say that's the travesty of justice in Pakistan. And unless we get a, a decision, a just decision from yeah. the, the courts in this country, I don't think so anybody is going to believe us. 
absolutely thank you so much and as we proceed i will definitely request for more time from you but that's all for today you take care of yourself goodbye and allah hafiz okay.